Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, it's me, the third one. And here today's video, we will... Hi guys, it's me, the one. In our today's video, we will talk about the probability of independent events. Last time, we had a video with regards to the difference between the independent and dependent events in probability. So, the target natin ngayon is to solve problems with regards to independent events in probability. So, without further ado, let's do this topic. So, basically, guys, I define muna natin ulit para ma refresh tayo what is meant by independent events. Sabi dito, two events are independent if the result of the second event is not affected by the result of the first event. So again, they are independent kapag yung result ng first event natin, hindi niya naapektuhan yung result ng second event. So para mas mga visualize nyo yung mismong uh, problems natin, maintindihan nyo what is meant talaga by independent events, meron tayo rito yung given problem. And before natin solve to, punta naman na natin yung formula natin. So sabi dito, probability of A and B is equal to probability of the first event, which is A, times the probability of the second event, which is B. So let's have this problem. What is the probability of tossing a head? When you flip a coin, then choosing an is from a standard deck of cards. So sir, paano ba natin solve yung itong problem? So ito po ba yung under ng independent events? Yes. Kasi, unang reason, magkaiba yung experiment nila. Again, one experiment is tossing a coin. Ito yung pinamadali eh. One experiment is tossing a coin and the other naman is drawing an ace from a standard deck of cards. Kung mapansin nyo, yung unang experiment na is tossing a coin and the other is drawing a card from a standard deck of cards. So, definitely, hindi maapektuhan ng first event natin, which is tossing a coin, yung pangalawang event natin, which is yung pagdodraw ng card. So, sabi dito, what is the probability of tossing a coin, a tossing a head when you toss, flip a coin, then choosing an ace from a standard deck of cards? So, sulat, sulat natin dito, yung format natin, probability of yung A natin, which is tossing a coin, dapat ang makuha natin ay head, and is yan ito yung probability natin so sa formula natin probability of get of tossing a head and drawing an ace so pag naging natin yan dito the probability of head times the probability of an ace so kung kapansin nyo anong kailangan natin gawin dito we need to calculate first for the probability of getting ahead sa pagtoss ng coin at yung probability naman ng pagbunot ng ace na card sa isang standard deck of cards. So, magkakaroon tayo ng panibagong, ano, panibagong solution. Hindi ko siya ibibigay sa inyo yung direct ang sagot na agad. Magkakaroon tayo ng solution. So, for the probability of getting ahead, ito man tayo sa head muna tayo. Sorry. The pr probability of getting ahead Alam mo naman natin, meron lang tayong two sides of a coin. Diba? Kung clinic natin siya, uh, the possible outcomes, the possible outcomes are uh, head tapos tail. Pero isa lang ang pwedeng lumabas kapag nag-toss ka ng coin. So kapag head tayo, that is one half. So bakit po one half? Yung numerator natin one, that is the favorable outcome, yung pag-toss natin ng coin, isa lang yung head doon, diba? Isa lang. Kaya siya one. Yung number two naman natin sa denominator, that is your number of all possible outcomes kasi nga, pwede kasi lumabas na head or tail, di ba? Isa, dalawa yun, dalawa yung ating possible outcomes. So that is one half. At pagdating naman sa ating probability of getting an ace, so, sa standard deck of cards, meron tayong 52. So meron tayong 52 cards. So lagyan natin dito ay, sa ating denominator ay 52. Kasi yan yung ating number of all possible outcomes. Pero ano yung ating numerator? Ang favorable outcome natin is 4. Bakit po? Kasi meron tayong apat na aces sa isang standard deck of cards. So meron tayong 4 over 
52. Okay, yeah. Gawin natin siyang 4, 1 over 13. Ito yung ating probability. So ngayon, kapag nakuha nyo na yung probability of head, probability of getting an ace, punta nyo na ngayon ito. It will become 1 half times 1 over 13. Diba? Kasi siya yung probability ng head times the probability of ace. So that is 1 half times 1 over 13. And simplifying this, yung probability of head and ace natin is equal to 1 over 26. Ito yung probability natin sa ating event. Na kapag nag-toss tayo ng coin, ang makuha natin ay head. At kapag withdraw tayo ng card, ace ang makuha natin. That is equal to 1 over 26. So I hope na sa first example pa lang natin, nakuha niyo na agad kung paano ba mag-calculate ng probability of an independent event. So ating next part of our video, ibigyan ko another, another example para mas lalo niyo maintindihan how to calculate the probability of independent event. Let us answer example number 2. A card is chosen at random from a deck of cards and sabi nito, yung card sa natin ay 52, it is then replaced and a second card is chosen. What is the probability of choosing a jack or an A? So, alam natin na we have 52 cards. Gawa tayo ng ating formula or equation. So, we have here the probability of getting a jack and A. So, gawin natin dito, that is equi equivalent to P of J times the probability of an A. So, on the other side, gawa tayo ng sarili natin equation. First, we need to find the probability of getting a jack. Alam naman natin, sa isang standard, standard deck of cards or sa 52 cards na meron tayo, meron tayo ng 4 jacks. So, that, that is equivalent to 4 over 52. Or pag simplify natin, the probability of getting a jack is simply 1 over 13. Ito yung sagot niya. And pasar pa naman po yung probability of getting an 8. Yung probability of getting an 8 is the same as this one. That is 4 over 52. Kasi meron tayong apat na 8 cards. Tapos meron tayong over 52 cards. So that is equivalent to 1 over 13. So when we replace those probabilities with certain formula, that is simply 1 over 13 times 1 over 13. And when you multiply this, the probability of getting a jack and a is equal to 1 over 169 because 1 times 1 is 1 and 13 times 13 is 169. So, this is a good By the way, you can also express your answer in fraction, in even at instruction. When you doing percentage or okay, decimal, if you want, you can use your calculator. So, I hope that first sa first and second example natin, natutunan niyo yung concept ng independent events and you already know how to calculate for the probability of independent events. So, sana kung nakatulong sa inyo ito, please don't forget to like and subscribe at hit na rin yung bell button for you to be updated sa ating latest uploads. Again, I'm Teacher Gon. Maraming maraming salamat. Bye-bye!